Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a realistic looking ice shader in Blender. We're going to be using the Cycles rendering engine. I'm going to be using the 4.2 build of Blender and this is a really simple ice shader but the results look absolutely amazing. It has real displacement so even though we're going to be using a sphere as an example when you render it you're going to get this really beautiful kind of crack displacement all over the shader and this is a fun little realistic eye shader you can chuck into a scene if you're trying to make some glaciers some ice maybe in a cave or on a surface somewhere so if you want to learn how to make this keep watching i will be uploading this blend file to my patreon so those of you who support the channel on patreon um, if you want to find out more about that, just check it in the description. Um, so yeah, I've said enough. Let's jump in and make some ice. So to demonstrate this, all I have here is a UV sphere that I have gone ahead and added a subdivision surface modifier to. Um, I'm in the cycles rendering engine and I've just got, you know, some basic area lights. You know, you go shift A, light and add in some area lights. And then, you know, you go to your light properties and you can adjust the strength. So very simple scene. Anybody can set this up. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to select our sphere, whatever you're adding your ice shader to, and we're going to go over to our shading workspace and we're going to go ahead and click new and let's call this material ice since it is what we're making. And for now, just so we can see a little bit better, I'm going to drag this up. We'll um, get to the looking at the render in a little bit, but let's just start with our node setup here. So by default, Blender gives us um, the principle BSDF. So we're going to start by coming here to the base color. Uh, let's just take this value up a little bit, but not all the way up to white. And I mean to the, like the full whiteness. And then we're just gonna take this slider here and just drag it slightly up into kind of like the bluish range a little bit. And that's all we're gonna do with the color there. And let's come over here to the transmission and let's bump that up to a value of one. And what we have now pretty much is just like your standard glass looking material that's frosty you know just with the default settings um but that's not ice so let's go ahead and add some more nodes so the first node we're going to use is a noise texture so we're going to go shift a we're going to click on search and type in noise let's get a noise texture and before we go any further changing settings here we're going to go shift d with it selected to duplicate it and place one underneath it and let's go ahead and drag here on the top vector just click and drag on it and type in texture and then co and you can see here texture coordinate and it doesn't matter which option you pick because you can always just come here and drag it in manually but we want a texture coordinate and we do want to go and make sure that it's the object that's going into the vector here for this top one so let's come here change a few settings we're going to make the scale over here four and we're going to go down to the detail let's make that nine let's make the roughness 0.75 and then we're going to go shift a search and get a bump node. So type in bump, place it over here and let's take that factor, plug it into the height. And then let's take this normal and plug it into the normal here. Okay. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we've got um, a little bit of distortion happening here. But let's actually take the strength and make it 0 0.05 as well. Um, and that's looking okay, but we can still make this look a lot better. So what we're going to do is we're going to go grab this bump, shift D to duplicate it, place it underneath this bump here. And let's take this normal of the top one and plug it into the normal output of the bottom one, like so. It's a little bit awkward, but you can see something like that. And then let's take our bottom one and plug in the factor into the height. And with this one, we're going to go and make it four as well. We're going to come here to this detail and let's make that 0.85. And I guess we can leave these as they are. But what we want to do is we want more control of this bottom bump. So we're going to move this noise texture. We're going to go shift a search and get a ramp. Just type in ramp and go for color ramp and place it over here. And now let's go Z and go render to see what this looks like. And we're going to just take this and drag this value up here. And it might be hard to see at the moment because it's um, very, the roughness is really high. So let's just drag this roughness down a bit so we can maybe see that. And you can see it's giving us this nice sort of ice looking effect, but we want to also take this white value down a little bit and come here and let's just take that value down to make it a little bit more gray. Somewhere almost in the mid range here like that. And to really get the full effect, let's just take this texture coordinate and take the object and plug it into the vector of the bottom noise texture as well. And what we're going to do, we're going to take this color ramp. We're going to go shift D to duplicate it, place it here at the top. Let's take this factor output from the bottom noise texture, plug it into the factor here of the color ramp. And then let's take that color and plug it into the roughness here, like so. 
And let's come take this black value and just make it more of a kind of lighter, maybe kind of mid-range kind of gray. And let's drag this guy down a little bit and make him white by dragging him up. And now you can see this is really starting to look kind of like a nice eyes. Now there's a lot of noise here, so it's kind of hard to tell. So so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm going to quickly just go render and just do a quick test render to show you where we're at so far. And there we have it. So far we have a nice looking ice kind of material here, but we're going to make this look even better by adding some cracks and displacement. And that's really going to take this ice to the next level. So let's go back in here to our node setup. This is what we have so far. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here to the material output, drag it out a bit. We're going to go shift a search and go this and get a displacement. Let's plug the displacement into the displacement of the material output. And we're going to come here and make the scale, I'd say one or 0 0.12, about 0 0.12, 0 0.2 around there. Um, we can always adjust it later. And we're going to go ahead and drag on the height over here. Just drag on it and let go. And let's type in Voronoi. And let's go with the texture and let's go with the color option and place it up here. So we've got the color of a Voronoi texture going into the height here of the displacement. And we're going to come here and let's take this the detail up to 0 0.07, round there, 0 0.08, round there. And then we're going to come here to the roughness, bring it down to 0 0.3. And we want this to have a coordinate. So we're going to come here to this texture coordinate all the way over here and just drag that generated all the way into the vector. If that's a bit of a far stretch, you can always just duplicate this guy and then plug the generated into here. But I'm just going to go with that. So it just saves on nodes. I don't know why that matters to me, but this is something I'm going to do. So now um, to see the displacement as well, we need to actually go to our material properties. And with this ice material, we just want to go to the um, here where things are and make sure you go to the settings drop down and then just come here where it goes to displacement and make it displacement and bump and then we can go ahead and give it this tender and render image and here we have some nice fractured looking ice and you have these kind of shards sticking out it looks kind of cracked and you can get a lot of different variation in this just by how you come here with the settings so for example i might come here and bring the scale down to 0.09 instead and you can come here to your noise textures and add a little bit more detail or roughness. You can always drag those values up. And same goes for the one here at the top um, until you get a result that you like. Just little changes with the detail and the roughness can give you more grungy looking ice or more smooth ice. It really just depends on how you play around with it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be uploading this um, ice material here to my Patreon. So that's all in the description below if you want to check that out. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.